Julie Pinnington Wright says, uh, Hi there, do you have any videos on light meters at all? So one very, very important thing about light meters is that they're always lying to you. It's always it's telling you the kind of the same type of information, but it's not telling you whether the photo is right. When I first started, I used to think, oh, I have to get the meter right in the center because then it's not too dark and not too bright. But the way that the camera figures out whether it's too dark or bright is flawed inherently because it's just a computer trying to figure it out. It's not a human brain uh, that can really think of every single situation. So auto works well, but when you're shooting in manual, and you really want to do things precisely and you want to do things your way, you start to learn where to put the meter in certain scenarios. So if somebody's backlit, if there's a lot of uh, outside light, very outside bright light, and they are inside, I know that my meter is going to say plus one, maybe even plus two, in order to expose for the person in the room, not the outside. The camera's lying to me because it sees that bright outside, it goes, oh my gosh, the photo's too bright, the photo's too bright, we gotta turn it down. But what it doesn't know is that the person that I wanna take the photograph of, they are in the dark. They aren't in the, in the bright spot, they're in the dark spot. I want the dark spot to be brighter. So I actually need to turn up the photograph, which is why the proper shot in that scenario would be a plus one or a plus two on the meter. So, the essential thing that, that you need to know going forward after you choose, just choose a metering system and then and then uh, forget it. I do the one with the, the circle and then the, the ring around the circle. That's the one that I use. Um, but essentially, you just want to realize that in any scenario, you have to, to, to kind of pick apart the picture and go, okay, what's really, really bright in this image and what's really, really dark in this image that would trick my camera and 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 make my camera think that the image is darker or make my camera think that the image is brighter. For instance, if you're shooting in snow and the entirety of the shot is just white, it's just this brilliant white, your camera is gonna say an image is really, really bright, uh, even though if you're trying to expose for a person in that image, it's the same thing as, as I was talking about before with the bright background. If you want to expose for the person among all this this white bright uh, snow, your camera is going to say plus two or maybe even plus three in that scenario when that's actually the the proper correct meter for that shot uh, because you're exposing for the dark person in uh, surrounded by all this this bright snow. Um, the opposite works as well. If you're in a dark church and you're trying to shoot the bride, the bride is 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 wearing brilliant white in the midst of all this darkness. So if you want to keep the detail in her dress, if you want to make sure her dress isn't super overexposed and just 100% white, you need to make sure that you that you don't get tricked by your camera. If your camera says that you're at zero, which is like, oh, not too dark or not too bright, in that scenario, it's actually too bright because the camera sees all the darkness in the in the church um, and it's saying, okay, this is kind of a, a dark image, so we need to boost it up, we need to make it brighter to make it work. But what it's not realizing is that the bride in her white dress can't be turned up anymore. She should, it should, the camera should stay at the exposure level that it's at currently. It shouldn't turn it up. So you're essentially fighting, when you're working with your meter, you're fighting with the camera's computer and your own brain to determine what's the right spot for this shot. If you're taking a picture, um, if you're taking any picture at all, you should be immediately trying to figure out how many brights there are, how many darks there are, and how many midtones. So just focus on those three things at first. Just try to try to um, try to break each section down. And then kind of compare them to see, you know, how much dark there is compared to how much super bright and how much mid there is versus how much bright. Try to kind of think of those as three different graphs. If there's a, if there's a shot that has black in it, white in it, and gray in it, just those three tones all equally distributed, then you'd say, okay, there's this much black, this much mid, and this much bright. Um, 
obviously it'll never be distributed like that, but that's that's the concept there. So when you look at the image, if you're taking a, a picture of uh, somebody in snow, and you know they're the only thing there, and then there's just snow everywhere, that that the graph in your mind should be this super tall graph for brights. The super tall graph for brights, and then and then the the amount of darks in the image is super low. You know whatever the person is, their clothing, if they're wearing darker clothing, um, all that stuff. So basically, that's the main thing that I want you to understand with metering is is figure out uh, how your camera is lying to you, and and as you shoot more and more, you're paying attention to where your meter is in certain scenarios, and you start realizing, oh, my camera in this scenario is lying to me about two stops too high, or my camera is just too dark in this scenario for what it needs to be.